and the floor to questions. Equally, if anyone's got a question as we go through, I'm very happy to take those as we run through the deck and I'll speak for Matt. <laughs> so, yeah. Likewise. Um, so, in short, Amazon Pay came into uh, existence to try and address both a set of buyer problems and a set of merchant problems. We knew the buyer problems because we surveyed actual Amazon customers and understood that the key causes of friction that they were having when shopping off Amazon were that the extension of trust they were being asked to essentially provide was quite a big step for them. And unless there were a lot of things that would, I guess, generate that trust and change that gut feeling for them that this was not a site to be trusted, extending trust to shopping in a situation they're encountering for the first time um, was a big ask and was a cause of friction for them. The next would be registration process on a website and forced account creation. And 86% of the people that we surveyed essentially called that out as one of the key issues and frustrations they felt when shopping off Amazon. And then finally, that it was just simply taking too long to complete a purchase. Tied in with the forced account creation and the length of time, the amount of fields it would take to create uh, to finalize that purchase. They've gone through the magical experience with wonderful content, great product imagery, really seamless uh, user experiences online, and then suddenly they're confronted with this barrage of information fields that they need to fill out on sequential pages. Merchants cited some slightly different problems, as you'd imagine, on the other side of the equation. One was being increasingly responsible for fraud and risk management. Another was how to convert visitors onto their sites into new customers, prevent that person actually just browsing online, but converting in-store. It's weird. We often hear about the uh, inverse of that being the case, but we found certain merchants were concerned that people actually would prefer to convert in-store, but browse online and not necessarily convert in their store. Um, and then offering easy and frictionless checkout processes when there's still a requirement to gather enough information to ship the product to that buyer and to complete their purchase. So we basically generated uh, or created Amazon Pay around providing trust, convenience, and speed and simplicity to that final part of the uh, online execution. I guess in terms of Amazon Pay at a glance then, our customer base really is this figure that you see there. I think there was a little laser on here somewhere. Um, so the figure that you see there is what our customer base actually should be. It's 300 million plus Amazon customers worldwide. So far, we've penetrated around 10% of those with Amazon Pay. So there's still a lot of work to be done, but that's been done through organic growth, through making Amazon Pay available on sites that are not Amazon and activating new buyers from there. However, there is, no, there is nothing someone needs to do to become an Amazon Pay customer other than use Amazon Pay for the first time. If they have an Amazon account, they can use Amazon Pay. It's as simple as that. Of the customers that have used Amazon Pay so far, 50% of them are prime customers who are known to transact more often and transact in greater order, um, average order value and spend more online. And over the last year, we've seen that active merchant base grow by 120%. So that organic growth is starting to take off. The solution, which Matt um, and I will take you through in greater detail, but Simply put in a nutshell is one account with your uh, shipping addresses and your digital wallet accessed through one username and password, which is your Amazon username and password. It provides speedy and simple checkout, 90% conversion rate, um, well, sorry, up to 90% conversion rate, I should say, and uh, checkouts that can be conducted in less than 30 seconds. And it's seamless across mobile and desktop. And some parts that we often overlook here, but it also can provide the customer a greater sense of assurance through the A to Z guarantee being extended to those customers. What's that? Ah, uh, yes. Should we <laughs> skip to the um, <coughs> skip to the slides that run through it, and we can talk no, about the Do you have the URL available on your computer? I don't remember off the top of my head. Can we download it? I used to. I mean, we could run through it on a live site. Yeah, but yeah, I just sure. don't remember the URL. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, uh, we're just having a quick comp lab because there was a demonstration video on my laptop which we've not been transferred across. So apologies for the uh, lack of cohesion here.
what we'll do is run through a live demonstration of what the user journey looks like on a site, and then um, Matt will speak through the um, process for how we develop that and introduce our clients. Do you have the URL available by chance? Do you know it up from of anywhere? The, of the demo, demo site? site. Because I just always have it. Uh, I can pull it up quite easily. Oh, nope, don't want the email. Um, There's no way I'll be able to find it quick. No, it's ah. Record a video so we wouldn't have to do it live because nothing ever goes well when you have to do a demo live. But well. so we go through it, and I'll just give a quick overview. Um, so one of the interesting things about the Amazon Pay integration is it's not just a payment gateway; is it does involve the whole flow, so that way you can get the greater conversion rates. Um, How do I get it to? How do you just make Safari work? With does it not let you accept a bad certificate? Okay, that that's what I was going to do. Um, so, so, so as I said, it takes over the entire flow. Um, so it allows you to get those greater conversions because you're able to use uh, the Amazon components inside your Drupal Commerce site. That's why you said it needs to be dragged over. Right. So we'll go ahead real quick and we're gonna buy a, let's go by and head and buy a t-shirt or a hat. So it's right there. I'm gonna add it to the cart. So when they come here, they can see the Amazon Pay. And we will go ahead and log in. So typically a site either allows a guest account or more times they want you to log in so you can track your, your user account. And as Jem said, many times some people aren't necessarily comfortable doing so. So actually when we're logging in right now, it's using like a single sign-on approach. It, it provisions a Drupal account. So now they're actually logged into Drupal. You can see it says my account. Um, so this is one of the great things about it is when they actually authenticate with Amazon, it creates a Drupal account that they can come back to and log into via Amazon. Again, kind of garners that trust and lowers that, garners trust and lowers that barrier to gain more conversions. So, one thing to notice is that the address, address book is actually replaced by an Amazon widget. So in Drupal Commerce 1, to get an address book, that's a module. Now using, the Amazon, using Amazon Pay, it's a widget rendered on their side, managed on their side. It's all tokens. You, know, you, just, you, you have an order reference token, and Amazon says, oh, here's a the, here's the shipping address they picked for that address, for that order. So we'll go continue to the next step. And we're able to fetch that data, and you can still use it with the shipping methods and the commerce shipping module. And then when we come to review, we have the same thing with the wallet. So 
reusable payment methods. In Drupal Commerce 1, you have to have a card on file, and your payment provider, your payment gateway module has to support card on file. With Amazon Pay, you get the address book, or the, the wallet widget automatically to reuse different payment methods. And they can add them actually in site, I believe. Correct? Like you can add a, yeah, you can add a payment from here. Um, if there's invalid payment handling, let's say the card's declined, you can edit the information all from within here. They don't need to leave your site to uh, change any information that might have been inside Amazon Pay. And then we'll go through and just pick a card. You continue the next step. And voila, it's all done. So just for real quick, I'm gonna log in and just kind of show what that looks like. And that is one thing too, is they could have it where when there's a login form, it does embed the login. You could actually turn off Drupal's registration and have your site solely be login with Amazon and Amazon Pay if you just wanted to kind of use Drupal Commerce to extend your already existing like marketplace inside Amazon. As a footnote, this is for just Amazon Pay. It doesn't actually provide um, like Amazon catalog syncing that like merchant web services might do. This is just for Amazon Pay. And when I said it, it kind of takes over a lot of your workflow. So if I go into the settings here, so general settings, um, if the US site doesn't support the language code, but if you're in the, the German or the UK, um, you can actually pick different languages that are available to it. So that way you can localize your experience. Um, for the payment settings, it allows asynchronous transactions, which I thought was really cool. There's a lot of payment gateways don't support asynchronous transactions very well. So how that works is that checkout flow we went through, let's say the card was declined. You, we would still complete checkout because it may take 60 seconds or whatever your fraud detection may want to have. And on a decline, this Amazon Pay will alert the site, hey, the payment was declined, and it actually sends an email telling them like, please visit pay.amazon.com with their localized URL. They update the payment method, and then it tries to reauthorize the order. So it has this robust workflow that's just part of a module, or part of our integration, which there's no other payment gateway that does this. There's no other integration that has this kind of um, robust integration. And one thing we also have is order management. Um, so you can automatically capture an authorization or capture on shipment. You fulfilled your order, you marked it complete, it'll capture it for you automatically. You don't need to go to another UI. Um, so that's why I actually really like the Amazon Pay integration, especially in Drupal Commerce 1, because it has a lot of these things that you kind of expect and it's all tied in. Uh, and then there's a few other things in here, but that's the general flow. You manage orders the same way. You go to the payments tab, uh, but it's more so that customer experience and some of those backend things that are powerful. Yeah. That's, that. that's the quick demo there. How do we get back to the presentation. I did it. I'm proud. Well, did you want to go to the strengths? Or how do we go? What's the next slide after that? Is it just, so we did, did that one? So we can back at the customers, but if you have done reviews journey to an app, We can go into the, how was, you want me to just go over how it was developed? Yeah. yeah. So when we go through the integration of this part. So it was really interesting because it does take over a huge part of the Drupal Commerce checkout. If anybody here is developed for Drupal Commerce 1, it's not, ex like there's ways that you can customize the checkout, but it's not exactly as easy. So it provided some really interesting challenges. Um, it is powered using checkout panes, so you can, you can still customize the checkout and configure it as you would like. Um, it can work alongside your existing checkout flow. So we have a lot of people that have it integrated. They were able to take their existing sites and just implement it alongside of it. I'm hoping we have a good case study out of this company called Rift Tracks, who's a huge Drupal Commerce user. They're a huge Ubercart user. And I believe next week they're going to put it in production, the Amazon Pay. So it'd be really great to have them show 
some of this conversion, how they implemented it with their highly custom site riff tracks. They sell Mystery Science Theater 3000 style like sound bites and they have digital and physical products and they said that Amazon Pay will help them, you know, hopefully convert their existing Amazon customers. And this actually, this integration had a really big impact in Drupal Commerce too. Because we were, we were writing this as we were developing Drupal Commerce too and along the way I was like, wait, we need to make this architecture change to better support integrations like this. Um, so over the week, over the past week, getting ready for Vienna, I worked on the Drupal Commerce 8 or Drupal Commerce 2 port and I actually have a demo that I'll be giving at our booth downstairs that shows a multilingual, uh, multi-domain, single platform site where you can go to the, dot, the de .amazon pay version and it's translated into German. It takes you to the, the German Amazon pay merchant and lets you go through the different flows and harnesses the multi-store concepts in Drupal Commerce 2. Um, so a lot of what we learned when developing Amazon Pay went into Drupal Commerce too, and will help you get larger conversions in multiple regions. Yeah, so I guess where I'd pick up from is the question of like, why is this important, so what? Um, it's great that you could have a payment solution like Amazon Pay, but the real reason why this is important is up there really, it's the 69.2 3% cart abandonment rate. Um, now that's not a figure that we necessarily um, have produced. That's from a report that we ran with a company called the Baymard Institute who are essentially UX specialists. They've done over 240,000 hours of UX research with mostly with enterprise uh, level customers but also small medium businesses to mid market. And across 37 different studies, that's the cost abandonment rate they saw. And the important thing it, here is it's not something that's fixed. Like, it will not always be the case that we will see 69% abandonment rate in e-commerce. It's not something we just have to grin and bear and accept. There are certain key drivers, key reasons for that abandonment rate. And these are some of the ones that they've pulled out. Now, in terms of extra cost too high for shipping, um, website having errors and crashing, or the delivery being too slow, that's not something necessary that Amazon Pay can help a merchant with. But there are, you know, there are other Amazon businesses that may be able to do that, such as FBA and AWS. I'm not here to talk about them today. But ones that we can see being addressed. And in some ways, these are, for want of a better word, low-hanging fruit in terms of addressing um, checkout conversion are ah, that forced account creation for over a third of people that is a reason for a cart, uh, cart abandonment. Over a quarter of people abandon carts because the process is too long or too complicated. I travel every work today for my sins on the uh, London Underground basically pressed up against the unwashed masses of London and um, as anyone that has ever gone through that can attest to a couple of things. It's an unpleasant experience and in modern times everyone's on their phone. Often in areas that have signal about to make a, uh, a purchase. It's that sort of period in the day where people want to while away time doing some shopping and I see time and time again someone will be shopping on mobile. They'll even have the product. They've got time to complete that checkout before they go underground and lose reception. And the phone just goes back in the pocket set them up for the goal, but it's just too hard to go through that process of a guest checkout or a new account creation on their mobile. The same is true of desktop, although in a different situation. Uh, trust is again a key driver, and we'll also just touch upon um, that there weren't enough payment methods. So I guess first looking at the top two highlighted in red, the uh, process of forced account creation and the fact that it's too long and complicated a uh, checkout process. A couple of things I think to touch on here. One would be this sort of proliferation of um, forced account creation has seen an average in the UK at least of 19 username and password combinations per user for their online shopping, which is apparently beyond the cognitive reach of most of us. It's certainly beyond my cognitive reach to remember those different combinations and which sites they apply to. And going back to the original slide for 
the customers that we've surveyed at Amazon, that is a key um, source of frustration. So as Matt touched upon, from here in the um, experience with Drupal Commerce, uh, from the uh, cart page, you can essentially skip through the checkout step and jump straight into checking out via Amazon Pay. Once the username and password have been entered and it's been um, authenticated with Amazon, the merchant will receive that name of the customer and their email. So two fields of information, but the crucial parts for a new account. What the merchant, you know, gem.com, wishes to do with that information later is up to them. It's your customer, and if you need certain things like the customer's age or gender or phone number for other parts of the account creation, that can be done sequentially. But the important thing is the account can be created there and then. Even if that person decides, yep, I'm going to enter my username and password, and the fire alarm goes off, and they don't complete the next step, which is to select their shipping and payment information. That username, sorry, that name and email address will still be passed. New customer acquired. Then, and this is an example of a one page template, it can be done sequentially, but every um, shipping address and every card or payment detail that, that person's ever entered into Amazon that's eligible on this site and for that purchase will render. So if Amex is suppressed, Amex will be grayed out. If that person has entered a, you know, a shipping address in the, like, I don't know, Ruratura Islands in the Cook Islands <laughs> archipelago then, and that's not a uh, place that merchant ships to, that will be suppressed. But we're getting past here the point where that customer has been forced to enter into um, more informational fields to complete their checkout. That's important because the average amount of fields that a merchant, sorry, a buyer is forced to enter are 14.8 um, fields at the moment of information just to complete their purchase. Here, they enter typing in the username and password and then the information is already stored just to be selected with one tap. What does this translate to? It translates to a faster checkout experience. So on the left there, we've got the average uh, checkout time, and that's from goods in the basket ready to check out via either a guest checkout, via the uh, hosted checkout, or via an alternative payment solution. That's the industry average for all. With Amazon Pay, we're looking at an average checkout time of 29 seconds. Now, it probably comes as no surprise to you all, but this is kind of a strong correlation. Purchase, uh, purchase completion rate to time is positively correlated. I don't know if anyone's ever heard of the golden hour. And sorry if this is a bit of a strange analogy. The, the golden hour is a term that's used for like first responders. So in a previous life, I used to be in the military and we'd get drummed into us the golden hour. So if someone becomes a casualty, that golden hour is when you get them into a place where they can get basically beyond first aid. And the faster you get them into that period within the golden hour, the greater the chances of survival. Now, this is a very dramatic analogy for checkouts, so <laughs> I apologize if it goes a step too far. But I always think it kind of applies here. We don't know what the golden period of time is. Is it a golden minute? Is it a golden 30 seconds? And to be honest, that golden period of time is getting forever and ever restricted as um, basically buyer expectations go up. But what we do know is that the greater the speed and the greater the simplicity of the experience, the greater the chance of that um, purchase completion rate going up. And this is not like what we want our end solution to look like. We would like that time to be reduced, the, the steps to be reduced, and part of that will be in terms of looking at new ways to identify the customer and also reduce those steps to completion. Are there any questions at this point, by the way? Cool. And so looking back again here, uh, I think we've looked at 
forced account creation and how um, Amazon Pay can assist with, I guess, negating the need for forced account creation um, and also speed and simplicity of checkout. Looking at trust then, and um, I'll touch very briefly on the um, there weren't enough payment options. So trust is at the heart of, uh, of the Amazon. My, <laughs> that's, um, that's supposed to say Amazon model, so it's not just a pigeon English. But trust is at the sort of heart of the solution, and that's come from trying to consistently deliver on customer expectations over a number of years. But it hasn't come easily, and that's been a hard-fought battle from selling books out of a garage in Seattle in 1994 through to you know, the current position of Amazon. I think last year it was um, Forbes is uh, most trusted uh, brand. And what we've seen from certain uh, research is with uh, the user engagement company SDL is that it takes around two years of continuous engagement with the brand to feel that strong sense of trust. And then five years of continuous engagement until that starts to translate into actual uptick in the average order value. So how does that information help anyone who's starting out in their own business for the first time? Because it's very difficult to earn that trust. Well, um, and sorry, to take a step back, we also see that for 78% of people, they consider trust extremely or very important in where they choose to shop from payments.com. So what we're looking to try and achieve with um, Amazon Pay is essentially taking the trust that's been built up in Amazon over a period of over 20 years now, 25 years almost, um, <clears throat> and implant that onto a person's site for the first time. Uh, I missed the show of hands earlier, but who kind of develops e-commerce sites or is an e-commerce merchant in the room? And I take it for you all then, it's nothing new to put some trust symbols onto a site. So Komodo or an, you know, even an SSL certificate or Norton antivirus. <coughs> we want to position Amazon Pay as that sort of trust symbol, certainly in the checkout site. We find that users tend to react more with gut than with logic. And sometimes we can see a bit of a confirmation bias within the industry for both Amazon Pay, but also with merchants, with developers. We know that your sites are secure. We know that some of the solutions you're using to make that site very secure are best in class. The average buyer transacting online doesn't know this, and they don't have the same level of technical sophistication. But they know what they like, and they know what they're familiar with, and they know what they trust. And that can come down to certain, I guess, like almost intangible things, but like the look and feel of a site, and how trustworthy does it feel. You, you see so, certain sites where you know every part of um, the payment information and the address is just in the same field. It looks all the same, even though the actual value of that information and the level of security that would need to be provided to that information is vastly different. My middle name looks exactly the same when I have to fill that out, as does you know, the county I live in, as my actual credit card number and the um, you know, the uh, expiry date on that card. Sites that sort of present that information in a slightly different field that, as trivial as it sounds, but is maybe um, bordered by a different color, can give people a feeling that that site has, uh, you know, is treating that data in a different way that would be more secure. We want to extend Amazon Pay, as I said, as a trust symbol onto people's sites to increase that level of trust that they feel engaging with that brand for the first time. That's a, I guess, part of the value proposition for small to medium-sized businesses. And we've seen good results with that. We, a couple of um, quotes up there from uh, Sue Taggart, the digital marketing manager at Soak and Sleep, a sort of UK merchant dealing in very luxurious bathing products. But she noted that Amazon's synonymous with shopping online and that basically seeing that Amazon logo 
immediately creates that feeling of trust in the site. It's something that resonates with brands. And I don't know if anyone's ever encountered seed lip drinks, but um, they're kind of a UK startup, been going for a couple of years now, selling non-alcoholic gin, which sounds strange and an oxymoron, but it's actually quite delicious if you ever have the designated driver and you just want an uh, adult drink for the night. But when their site started, even though the brand itself now features in many restaurants, in Michelin, I think it's partnered with the top 100 Michelin-starred restaurants in the world now to provide seed lip drinks to them. But actually, to the average buyer online, it's a new brand. And they saw that basically having that trusted source that people already know was helping them to drive new customer acquisition and an increase in sales. And so just going back one step as well, the final point that there weren't enough payment methods. Now, <clears throat> this can be slightly misleading, and I think this should be caveated. If you're selling something that can only be found on that site and is the best in class in the world and is unique to your site and your product line, then a buyer will pretty much crawl over broken glass to purchase that, no matter how many uh, metaphorical barriers are put in their place, they will find a way to complete that checkout and purchase that product. In reality, there's always another option online. There's always someone else selling something similar, if not the same product, in their own shop. And being best in class in terms of providing a convenient user experience for the merchant while they're on your site is a key point to um, to making sure they convert while on your site. Now, in terms of not offering enough payment options, what uh, this study by Baymard kind of threw out was that there's a real particular subset of customers who prefer to see certain third party, so to speak, or alternative payment solutions such as Amazon Pay, such as PayPal or Apple Pay or Android Pay. And these are international buyers. Now, certainly, uh, where I'm working at the moment in the UK, internationalization is a big focus given a backdrop of political uncertainty and certainly people want to make sure that their brands are able to um, you know, uh, trade and sell across uh, international boundaries. And I expect that's the same for merchants within the US, within uh, the rest of Europe as well. And the subset of buyers to whom there not being enough payment methods um, available really counts is international buyers, so people buying off their home nation site. It's again touching upon that trust symbol of seeing a sort of internationally recognized brand on a site. And there's a greater part to this in terms of the convenience for that purchaser. If I'm purchasing something from a site that I've not engaged with before, I really want it, I'm trying to think of an example now, you know, I want to get this beautiful jacket that I've seen from Italy. Now, my foreign language skills are dire at best, um, <clears throat> and they're not going to be necessarily improved by having to go through a process of going through a returns policy or refunds policy in a different language. So where having international payment methods that can be uh, localized and multi-language really um, addresses a buyer pain point is for those buyers buying internationally who want that trust symbol, but they also want the convenience of if something goes wrong, I know I can deal with that payment method, not necessarily the merchant themselves. So if I'm buying this Italian jacket and I know I can purchase with Amazon Pay, I know if the goods don't arrive in time, if they don't arrive in the condition they were described to, I will be able to get my money back and that payment solution will act as that middleman with the merchant rather than me having to go to someone who um, you know, is in a different location to myself, different country, potentially different regulations around returns policies and certainly a potential language barrier there. Any questions? So. And one final thing that I think can be overlooked sometimes because we focus on buyer trust, but is also at the heart of the solution we've tried to make sure it's um, trustworthy for merchants as customers as well. Um, our sort of 
account management team will often complain that one of the headwinds you can face is such as that retailers will have sometimes mixed feelings towards Amazon and that by having Amazon pay on their site, there would be a concern that this is, I guess, some form of digital Trojan horse that's there to harvest data from their site, feed it back into Amazon and run everyone out of business. So that, <laughs> that like feeling of mistrust would not, I think, be negated by me just saying that's not the case. So what we've done is basically coded it into our solutions. So the information that will be passed to Amazon uh, or Amazon Pay is simply the order value. Um, well, and also the time of the execution, but no product line information is passed. So what's actually been sold, we don't know. Obviously, unless it's a single product site and then that would be fairly obvious. But we don't have an interest necessarily in finding out that product information. We just want to facilitate the buyer and the merchant making that transaction. Instead, what the customer receives, as in the merchant, will be the customer name, email address, their telephone number, shipping address, billing address, payment confirmation. These are the main lines of information. There's, I think, another 17, 16 and 17 information fields that can be passed as part of the product. Now, that's basically coded in within the solution. It's also within our terms as well, so we don't share data. And I guess the final thing that I'd say on this is it would also be business suicide for Amazon to and Amazon Pay to act in that way. Um, like over 60% of Amazon's revenues now come from outside of retail, the majority of which come from services. So if one subset of Amazon started <laughs> corroding that trust in Amazon as an overall um, organization, that would be the equivalent of just taking a shotgun to your own foot and pressing the trigger. And 40% of all e-commerce is, in some ways, traced back now to AWS as well. So if we were to do that, there would probably be a more, um, you know, a more efficient way of doing it via AWS, but that's not the case in like many hundreds, thousands of brands or, and companies already trust AWS. So I'll just turn now to a couple of case studies and then obviously open up for questions or Matt, if you have anything more you'd... I just wanted to say, like for the order, when we create the order reference, what happens in that checkout is the widgets then say, here's your ID. Now, this is the ID you can talk to Amazon with to know merchant information, which in the UK you get payment, right, you get billing right away or after payment, and then in the US you don't get any. Um, but all you pass is the order value and currency, and then like when it was created, your, the store it was for. Um, so like in Drupal Commerce 2, you can actually send that different store, label, like the name of the store, but that's it. There is no line item data, there's no how much in tax should be sent, it's just this much, and that much could have been whatever percent of shipping charges, taxes, promotions, whatever, it's not known. Like we just send that flat amount. So that is one thing that's nice too, because we don't have to calculate all of that and set and replicate all that data and pass it along. Thanks very much. So uh, yeah, a couple of case studies. Now the first one, Seedlip, who I mentioned earlier, and as I mentioned, it's, it's a bit unfair to call them a startup. They're um, becoming quite well established, but in many ways they're still online at least, a, you know, a small um, growing business. And the key things really that we look to help them here with was the element of trust online and also new customer acquisition. And the figures here are for within 60, uh, sorry, six months of uh, going live with Amazon Pay. We saw starts with the 30% of increase in conversion, and that's an increase in conversion versus their um, native checkout. Um, the only alternative payment option they have is Amazon Pay. So it rates well in terms of conversion versus their native checkout. And it quickly assumed 50% cart share as well. <clears throat> and what we believe the case, uh, the reason for that is because it was a relatively nascent business and a small business. So um, the cart share naturally would go to a solution or a payment option that people were more familiar with on a site that they were unfamiliar with. The reduction in checkout time was 60%, and again, that's correlated in many ways to the increase in conversion. 
And one thing that I really like about this, and it's worth uh, touching upon now um, in light of the Drupal Commerce integration, is it took them 15 minutes to implement. So with Drupal Commerce, we um, will hopefully very soon be bundled into the Commerce Kickstart, which will, Matt, correct me if I'm wrong, but like eliminate a lot of um, friction in terms of implementation. And I certainly think the solution in terms of a plugin solution to Drupal Commerce that Matt has designed um, takes a lot of the friction out of implementation. And to get set up in Drupal Commerce 1 for Drupal 7, you, know, you download the module and we hook into the libraries module and you download the SDK. So that takes some time because there's no way to automate that process really. So you know, let's say that's 10 minutes to download that. You install it and you plug in your merchant details. It'll probably take more time to copy over your details from your seller central account into the Drupal Commerce store, but you do that and you're done. Um, in Drupal 8, it's even easier because of Composer. You literally could start with a blank Drupal site, run Composer require Drupal slash the module name, and it will download the module, the SDK, and Commerce itself, and in 10 minutes, you'll have your whole site ready. Um, so it is one that, you know, you don't have to manually implement it, the module does. You just plug in your information and go. Okay, thank you. <laughs> And then, um, and then a case study from All Saints, uh, what we'd consider like an enterprise level brand with an international footprint. So the trust element for All Saints maybe was less important there. Um, very well established, certainly in the UK, the US, they, um, you know, both their online shopping experience and their checkout was already pretty well optimized, but what we saw was really through providing that speed and convenience of checkout, some pretty compelling results. So again, there was a 34% increase in conversion, this time for a 24% cart share, and as I mentioned, the sort of fact that the site was already well established, we believe, kind of provides slightly a glass ceiling in terms of um, eventual cart share, but um, <clears throat> as there were already customers set up with accounts on All Saints who would be um, happy to consider, uh, continue transacting with those. It did see a 15% higher average order value, however, so customers that were checking out with um, Amazon Pay were gonna spend 15% more on average than those using the native checkout. Now, there's a number of different drivers for this. One that we believe is potentially because of the um, sort of disproportionate amount of Amazon Pay users who are also Prime users, so Prime users tend to be um, more affluent than average, and as I mentioned earlier, uh, more frequent purchases online, and when they purchase online, they also tend to spend more online. Um, and also, the fact that if it's a quick and uh, convenient checkout, and you know that's going to be the case, you can free up more time for your shopping and purchases and browsing, which can lead to more um, items going into the cart itself. And then a 70% reduced checkout time from what was already a fairly well optimized checkout for All Saints. So thank you very much for bearing with us while we had a few technical issues at the uh, start of the presentation. This has given me exactly the case I need to go back to work with to uh, get them to give me a MacBook rather than this antiquated laptop. Um, <clears throat> I'm very happy to take questions now. I, just a sort of final, I guess, note for myself. Like, as Amazon Pay, we're not newcomers to e-commerce by any um, stretch of the imagination, but we are getting to know Drupal and the Drupal community and Drupal commerce um, more. So very happy to speak to you all. I'll be on the booth um, for the rest of the week co-located with commerce guys. It'd be great to understand more about the sort of businesses that um, you're involved in at the moment, um, what customer pain points you're looking to solve, and you know, looking at how we can work uh, together in the future as well. But please, any questions? I have a few things I can add. Sure. Um, so at the booth, we will be doing a demo, and I have it set up. I have a local environment, so I don't have to worry about the Wi-Fi crashing. Well, I can't talk to Amazon if the Wi-Fi crashes. Um, but it's a Drupal Commerce 2 site that has multiple stores in it, and it's one domain, one site, and the current domain you're on controls the active store and translation. 
which relates to a specific seller account. So let's say that you do, you have a, you're based in the UK, but you also have a German store. So you have a German merchant account. You go to the website without a domain prefix and it assumes this is the main site, that this is the UK store, uses the UK seller central. Um, when they get to the German site, it will be in the German translation and it will be localized and have your German Amazon Pay account set up um, with also that localization. So that's the demo I have to kind of go through it so we can show off these new features in Drupal Commerce 2 and also how the Amazon Pay integration works where it shows, you know, you can, it's one account, it's still the one account inside Drupal, but they sign up from the different channels. So one interesting thing you brought up, when somebody logs in and they didn't convert, you have their information. So you can send them an email and say, hey, why don't, you know, did we make you upset you didn't finish your order? Like, what can we do for you? Um, which is crucial. Um, a lot of time with cart abandonment, there is no way to reach out to them. Um, so that is a huge step. And one thing that we're really looking to do in the next, with this new version of Drupal Commerce 2, is be more opinionated and give best advice in e-commerce, which I really think our partnership with Amazon Pay is doing that. Um, because with building this integration, we're also learning. We're also able to take those best practices and build them into this platform as well and deepen our integration with Amazon Pay. So it's a really good um, mutual relationship in that effect. Is there any questions? Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you.